So now we have done the E plus E portion, where as we can see we have introduced an idea, we've given an example about that idea, then we provided some explanation about that example, we moved to a second E plus E, so in the first of this one we have presented an example, and then now we've explained that example. So when we reach this point, what we might want to want, what we might want to do now is perhaps to insert an illustration in order to clarify or to make the point more vivid. So for example, here's a an illustration that I'd like to add to this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and that will allow me to copy this image and I'm going to decide where do I want it and I think I want to put this right about here in the original so I do that I right click again and now I can paste it now when the image is pasted in there we can see it's quite large and takes up extra space so what I can do now is I can format this picture so I'm going to right click and then I can see I have the option here to wrap text and I'm going to wrap it square so that the text will wrap around it. Once I've done that, now what I can do is by left click and then hold down on the corner I can take this image and I can change the shape, the size, and then I can move it up and put it in an appropriate position and it's small enough so that it doesn't overwhelm everything there on the page. Now as we know from the discussion and activity that we did on the illustrations, just putting an illustration in there by itself doesn't really help the readers to understand what's actually going on, in which case we need to provide some explanation to help that readers to figure out what's happening here. And to do that, once again I'm going to right click on the image and there's another option here to insert caption. So I'm going to take that option and then I have a text box here where I can identify what the figure is. Now for this there's very limited options. The drop down here allows me to do an equation, a figure, or a table. But we can fix that later. Right now I'm just going to uh, do this as figure one and I'm going to call it the absorption I'm going to call it the absorption rate and I'm going to say OK. What's happened now is I have this here at the bottom you can see I misspelled absorption so we'll spell it right. So here I have figure one the absorption rate here at the bottom of this but now that I've done this I can edit this because now I don't want to call this figure one, I'm going to call this image one. And I can go ahead and I can change that and and provide the and put it in the phrasing or that I want according to the label that I want. And also I'm not really too pleased about having this in italic, so I'm going to take the italic part out. Now what I did in advance was I went ahead and I prepared what I wanted for my for my uh, caption. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I can go back in here now and I can then just go ahead and paste in the caption that I had originally decided here on, under figure one. So by doing that now I can I can use it in whatever font I want, whatever size I want the font. I have a lot more flexibility than what I had when I did when I did uh, from the drop down box originally. And in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to reduce the reduce the font size. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to change the color so that it's it can be distinguished from the body of the of the text that I have in the in the paper itself, which I'm going to change all that to just a regular, regular black for now.
Now, in the body of the text, the in-text citations are very small because all this is, this is just an indicator to help the readers find the, the more detailed citation at the end of the paper. However, for the illustrations, it's quite different. For the illustrations, we need to have a more detailed and elaborate citation, which I've gone ahead and I've prepared that in advance as well. So I'm going to copy that that I've already done. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to insert it here. So now I have my I have my my source here. I'm going to identify that that is the source. So now I have my source, I have my citation and I have my I have my illustration, figure one, uh, inserted here. However, as we also learned when we did that activity before, then the just putting this in here with the caption is not enough. We need to have some kind of reference in the text itself. So right here I'm going to put a C figure one which shows the importance of recognizing the absorption rates for the source. of calcium. Usually dairy products are regarded as the best source however green leafy vegetables have a much higher rate. And I need to cite that. And so since it didn't have a specific author, it was just an article, I cite it with the title of the article because that's how it will be listed. That's how it will be listed in the work cited at the end of the paper. And the same, the punctuation comes in at the end after that. So now that I have all of this, so uh, usually when we're doing our draft, we're going to do our draft in uh, single space to help with all that uh, to see what's going on. So now I'll, what I would do is I would highlight the entire page and then I would change this to right click and I'd go to paragraph and then I would change this to double spaced rather than right and single spaced and when I do that my reference to the illustration is down here see figure one but the illustration itself is still up on this upper page so what I need to do now is take the illustration and move the illustration down also, I have to move the caption down as well. So I move my illustration and my caption down so that they are closer to where it says figure one rather than on a different page. And of course the caption can be at the top of the illustration. The caption can be, caption can be at the bottom of the illustration, wherever, however you want to organize it so that you think it's going to be the best, e easiest for the readers to see it. However, both the illustration and the caption 
should be on the same page together and they should also be as close as possible to where it says figure one where the reference is on the on the um, on the on the page itself in your document so in this way you can move your illustration and you can format the illustration so it fits on the page if you format it to square then what will happen is the text will wrap around it then you can add your caption and the caption will be formatted separately if you use a different different size and style of font or a different color it becomes very clear which part is part of the caption and which part is part of the the body text but once again when you have an illustration the illustration needs to be explained twice it needs to be explained briefly in a caption so that the readers can know that the emphasis is on the fact that the milk the dairy is not absorbed quite as well as these other products and then that is explained in more depth over here in the actual body of the text itself.